At the celebration banquet, my girlfriend attended with her first love, in the heat of the moment, the confused crowd asked them to kiss, watching the video, which a friend forwarded to me and was now trending. I was strangely calm, I even found myself amused, leaving a comment below, after sneaking around for so many years, they finally dared to kiss openly. Congrats. Chapter 1. Last week, it was my dad's first birthday after being discharged from the hospital, and I specifically invited Freya to join us for dinner, but who would have thought, we waited until the food went cold, and she never showed up. It wasn't until I checked Matthew's WeChat moments that I realized Freya had rushed to the hospital to take care of him for a mere sneeze. I confronted her, but she was indifferent, your dad's fine now, and I'm not even part of your family, I would just be in the way. We gave each other the silent treatment for a few days. Yesterday, Freya sent me a text asking me to attend her company celebration banquet tomorrow. It was her subtle way of extending an olive branch. Over and over, we've quarreled and reconciled. All because of Matthew. This cycle has been the norm ever since Matthew returned to the country. The control of our relationship has always been in Freya's hands. Whether it's good or bad depends entirely on her mood. And her mood depends on Matthew. I've become just a pawn in the emotional game between them. But yesterday, when I saw her message, I no longer felt any joy. All I felt was overwhelming exhaustion. I knew something significant had happened, but maybe it was a good thing for me. After all, I could finally take my heart back. Leaving it in the hands of someone who doesn't value it has been utterly draining. I replied calmly, got it, and went back to work. After all, I had been disappointed far too many times. After work today, I tidied myself up, but after some thought, I didn't bother changing into a suit. When I arrived at the banquet hotel, I was right on time. Without an invitation, I couldn't get in. Calling Freya yielded no response, and my messages went unanswered. I could only stand at the entrance, watching the elegantly dressed guests come and go, feeling like a fool left out in the cold. After the tenth unanswered call, I simply turned and left. The banquet was so crowded that it was impossible to get a cab. In the end, I decided to walk home. I hummed a tune as I strolled, taking in the scenery. It was actually quite peaceful. When I finally got home, I saw the video my friend had forwarded. In the video, a stunning couple, looking perfect together, shared a passionate kiss amidst the cheers of the crowd. The caption read, the main stars of the banquet, Freya and her date. The video had already made its way to the trending section in the local area, and many people were commenting below, calling them a match made in heaven. Oddly enough, when I saw the video, my heart felt an eerie calmness. There was even a sense of relief that they were together. Otherwise, my recently resolved heart might have wavered again. I raised my hand to type a few words under the video, which were quickly buried under a flood of comments. Freya and her little lover can finally be open about it now. Respect and congrats. Chapter 2. After a shower, I went straight to bed. I didn't bother with the rumors circulating online. Nor did I ask Freya why she didn't give me an invitation. None of it mattered to me anymore. In the middle of the night, half asleep, I heard Freya stumbling back, drunk, listening to her heavy footsteps. For the first time, I didn't get up to help her. Nor did I make her a bowl of hangover soup, smelling the alcohol on her breath. I frowned. It turns out that when I stopped seeing Freya through rose-colored glasses, she's actually quite irritating. For some reason, she didn't turn away for a long time. I pretended to roll over, leaving her behind. Kevin, I want some hangover soup. She mumbled, complaining, but I stayed motionless in bed. No hangover soup was worth getting up for in the middle of the night anymore. I used to wait at home like a housewife, just so that when Freya returned, She'd see someone was waiting for her, but all I got in return was her cold indifference and disdain. Even that bowl of soup would often end up spilled on the floor after one of our heated arguments. Staining the carpet I carefully chose, she was always standing tall, watching my emotional outbursts with an air of superiority, then stabbing me in the heart. If I really had something with Matthew, why would I still be with you now? Eventually, she stopped explaining anything. She would just watch me unravel, like a madman, falling apart and piecing myself back together. Then, She'd step all over me again just when I'd found some balance. I got used to it. Looking back now, a grown man behaving like I did was pretty pathetic. Even just thinking about it is embarrassing. Seeing I wasn't responding, she pushed me again. I continued pretending to sleep, not moving a muscle. Finally, she gave up. She clattered about the house, removing her makeup and showering noisily. By the time I woke up again, it was already 10 in the morning. Surprisingly, Freya was still asleep, her face buried in the covers. Strange. She wasn't out with Matthew today. After a simple brunch, I sat on the couch, re-watching the video from yesterday. I watched them kissing and dancing together on loop, at least 10 times, down to the details of the Rolex watch Matthew was wearing last night, the latest model, a gift from Freya, for no reason at all. 
just because she felt like giving it. So different from the Freya who had always been so stingy when it came to buying a gift for my dad when he was in the hospital. At 1 p.m., Freya finally got up. She looked at the empty dining table, confused as to why I hadn't cooked for her as usual. Why didn't you come yesterday? She asked, scrolling through her phone beside me. You didn't give me an invitation. They don't know me. How would I have gotten in? I joked. Freya had worked her way up to vice president at her company, yet none of her colleagues knew who her boyfriend was. Some even thought she was a wealthy single woman. I used to get upset about it, but she always scolded me with a patronizing tone. I go to work to make money, not to show off my relationship. Can you stop interfering with my work? It wasn't until yesterday that I realized it wasn't that she didn't want to introduce her boyfriend. It's just that the title of boyfriend could only belong to Matthew. Why didn't you call? She asked. I smiled and gestured to her phone's missed calls. It was probably filled with my calls by now. Well, since you didn't show up, I ran into Matthew and had him stand in for you. I nodded, saying nothing. I knew exactly what kind of person Matthew was. He did it on purpose. Great. After all, he's much better looking than me. A perfect fit to be your date. There was no argument. Freya widened her eyes, as if she didn't recognize me. Are you mad? I told you. Nothing's going on between us. I quickly responded, if you two could be together, you would have already been, and I'd be out of the picture. I interrupted her, shrugging. I'm going to work overtime today, so I won't be home for dinner. When I returned from overtime, the house was already empty. Chapter 3. Sure enough, Freya had started another round of silent treatment. Honestly, the Cold War is pretty pointless. I used to rack my brains for all kinds of little surprises to make peace with Freya, killing off all my brain cells in the process. Now, I actually feel an unprecedented sense of relief. I don't have to wait up for Freya to come home at night, nor worry if she's out getting drunk. In the mornings, I no longer have to take a detour around three streets just to drop her off at work, leaving the house half an hour early. I don't even have to keep an eye on my phone during work, waiting to see if Freya would text me back or worrying about whether she's with Matthew. None of it is my concern anymore. Bringing my focus back to myself, I now have more time to do my own things. I can unapologetically play games with my buddies, or grab a late night snack with colleagues at a barbecue joint. Even when I work overtime, I feel more energized. Watching colleagues who joined after me rise to leadership roles, I feel ashamed of how little I've achieved. I've been coasting along ever since Freya said, as long as one of us can earn money, that's enough. I gave up on my career without hesitation. Every day, I'd come home early just so Freya could have a hot meal waiting for her. Even though she barely ate at home due to her social commitments, I kept at it for years, day in and day out. I guess I've always been blinded by love. Now that I've broken free of this toxic cycle, I realize how wrong I was. Maybe there's no such thing as first come, first served, in love, but the person who's not loved definitely loses. Freya never even bothered to visit my dad when he was sick, yet she was willing to make ginger soup for Matthew when he sneezed. I ruined my own career for this woman, and now I've got nothing to show for it. Even my once proud relationship has become a laughingstock to others. I guess I should be thankful to the person who filmed that video. If it hadn't been for that video, I wouldn't have seen things clearly and made up my mind. Who knows how much longer I would have been stuck in this emotional whirlpool, unable to escape. The ambition of the younger generation has rubbed off on me. It's time I take the second step in my life. The first step was throwing away my dignity for Freya. The second will be reclaiming it, piece by piece. I'm starting to take my job more seriously, even staying late to work overtime voluntarily. I've been preparing for all kinds of exams and evaluations, pushing myself to new limits. In this era of slackers, I quickly stood out. My colleagues constantly joke that I've become a workaholic. For some reason, their banter is a lot more fun than Freya's arguments ever were. These past few days, Freya's still giving me the cold shoulder, and she's barely been home. That's fine by me. Otherwise, I wouldn't know how to explain my sudden workaholic transformation to her. In her world, she's always the most important. When the Cold War ends, I'm sure I'll have to go back to being the servant, catering to the spoiled princess. God, let this Cold War drag on a bit longer, at least for now. I'm living the freedom I haven't felt in ages. Chapter 4 During a break in the meeting, I stepped out with a colleague for a cigarette. Freya, unusually, sent me a message, only to quickly retract it. I knew this was one of Freya's little tricks, pretending to send the wrong message and then withdrawing it. It was meant to grab my attention. Unfortunately for her, that tactic only worked when we were still flirting. Back then, I would have gotten jealous, thinking she was deliberately trying to catch my eye. But now, I just figured Freya had really sent it by mistake. I deleted the conversation, erasing years of memories along with it. After work, I got a call from Freya. I'll pick you up after work. She didn't ask. She commanded, leaving no room for refusal. 
I guess she knew my car was restricted today and that I hadn't driven. But my first reaction was to resist. No need. I'll just take the subway. It's more eco-friendly. My refusal earned a sarcastic laugh from Freya. She said she'd be waiting downstairs. Then hung up. With no other choice. I slung my bag over my shoulder and waited downstairs for her. An hour passed. And still no sign of Freya. Then the phone rang. It was her. You haven't come down yet. I explained that I'd been standing at the entrance the whole time. But she said she'd been waiting for me for a while. Her silence on the other end told me she was on the verge of getting angry. Aren't you at Panda Tower? A smirk crossed my face. Panda Tower is Matthew's company. Not mine. Ha. Huh. I knew I shouldn't have placed any faith in Freya. It was just further proof of my position in her heart. I'll take the subway. Don't bother coming here. I hung up before she could say anything else. It was the first time I'd ever hung up on her. And it felt great. By the time I got home, Freya was already sitting on the couch, waiting for me. A rare sight indeed. Considering she always had a million excuses not to come home. Dinner with co-workers today. Camping with friends tomorrow. And somehow, Matthew's shadow always seemed to be there in the background. Kevin, you're back. I didn't mean it today. I was trying to surprise you, but I messed it up. I know you didn't mean it. In fact, it's because she didn't care. I get it now. You're not mad. Right. She studied my expression, trying to gauge my mood. I shook my head and just grabbed enough ingredients from the fridge to make a meal for one. It had been a while since I cooked, and my skills were rusty. Seeing me prepare food only for myself confirmed in her mind that I was upset. You're not even cooking for me anymore. If you're not mad, then what? Why are you always like this? I've already apologized. Isn't that enough? See, this is classic Freya. She's good at reading people but never takes responsibility for her own actions. It's partly my fault, too. In the past, I would have gotten angry by now. I'd even dredge up old grievances and demand we settle them. And whenever that happened, she'd find my weak spot and hit me with the same line, if Matthew and I could be together, we would have already, and you wouldn't matter. It's laughable how much I hate that line. There's nothing else in the fridge. You'll just have to make do, I said. In truth, I couldn't be bothered to cook for her. Countless times. I'd made dinner and waited for her at home, reheating the food over and over, but she never showed. When I complained about her wasting food, she always brushed me off. How much can a few dishes cost? Can you stop making a fuss over nothing? Yeah, just like the food, my efforts were worthless to her. Chapter 5 I thought Freya would take the hint and leave me alone, or that she'd give me the silent treatment for a while longer. I'd welcome that, honestly. But to my surprise, the next day at noon, she messaged me again. I'll meet you at your office. I've got a meeting nearby and can give you a ride. Really? I glanced at my car parked in its spot. Does she know how expensive overnight parking is around here? I was about to refuse, but then I thought better of it. Maybe this would be a good opportunity to lay everything out and settle things with Freya once and for all. End it cleanly, and she could be with Matthew without any delay. After work, I headed downstairs with my bag. This time, Freya didn't go to the wrong place, but she brought along an unwelcome guest, Matthew, to be honest. It had been a long time since we'd met in such a formal setting. Usually, it was when Matthew dropped Freya off at home. Matthew took his place in the passenger seat, and Freya honked the horn from the driver's seat. It was as if she were asking why I wasn't getting in the car yet. I laughed in disbelief, then opened the back door and got in. Hey, with someone else driving, why not enjoy the ride? I heard the passenger seat has the highest fatality rate in accidents anyway, so no thanks. As my thoughts wandered, I remembered the first time I met Matthew. Our friends threw him a welcome party, and it just so happened to be at the same place where we were having a team-building event. I'd had a few drinks, and after the event, I wanted to go home with Freya, but I saw the two of them drinking from the same glass in response to our mutual friends teasing. Someone even asked Freya, when are you going to break up with that guy? Matthew's standing right in front of you. Matthew, with his typical calm and charming demeanor, just smiled at Freya. Freya didn't say anything, she just shook her head. That was when I realized Matthew was the long-lost first love buried deep in Freya's heart. And that's why I couldn't help but compare myself to Matthew. But now, I've long since stopped caring about that. Comparing ourselves to others, what's the point? Freya, there's an art exhibition this weekend. Why don't you come with me? Matthew's voice broke the awkward silence in the car. For some reason, Freya didn't immediately agree. She glanced at me through the rearview mirror, watching my reaction. Kevin wouldn't be that petty, would he? Keeping you cooped up at home all weekend like some kind of housewife. Matthew's mocking tone came through. He never thought much of me. I shrugged. Do whatever you want. I've got overtime this weekend. Anyway, go enjoy yourselves. Just try not to let another video go viral this time. It's not a good look. I said pointedly. Earning a confused look from Freya. A video. What video? Her confusion seemed genuine. But I didn't care to explain. 
why bother causing more trouble for myself? Matthew quickly shifted the conversation back to the art exhibit, and I knew this whole thing was part of his plan, but as long as Freya doesn't officially break up with me, Matthew has to stay on the sidelines. I had intended to clear things up today, but now I found it amusing to let Matthew play the third wheel for a bit longer. I stopped talking and focused on saving all the trending videos from yesterday. They were solid evidence. Evidence of Freya's infidelity. Thinking of that, I couldn't help but feel a pang of regret about the parking fees. Listening to the two of them chatting, I slowly drifted off to sleep. Chapter 6. When I woke up, we were already home. I stretched lazily and followed Freya upstairs. Silence hung between us, but I found comfort in it. You're working overtime this weekend. She suddenly asked, catching me off guard. Yeah, I replied. Going to the office to read counts as overtime, doesn't it? Today, I picked up some things with Matthew. I specifically came to pick you up after work, she hurriedly explained, but her words held no weight with me. Matthew's family isn't short of money. What could he possibly need Freya to buy for him? Maybe she's just playing the simp again, following him around like a loyal dog. As I thought about it, I chuckled bitterly. Haven't I been Freya's dog all along too? Only now. This dog has finally wised up, it's time to turn my back on her. I mumbled some half-hearted responses and prepared to shower and sleep. Later that night, Freya pressed herself against me, sending a shiver down my spine, but I didn't move. My heart was as calm as still water. The next day, to my surprise, Freya was downstairs again. Lucas and the others want to meet up today. They insisted I bring you along, she said. I glanced at her, speechless. While thinking about my expensive parking fees, I held back for a while, but finally, I spoke. I'll drive. You lead the way. Just make sure to follow me. Okay, she urged, worried that I might back out. Why would I? Lucas was the one who sent me that video. He was also the one who encouraged Freya to break up with me. They all grew up together. Childhood friends. Everyone thought Freya and Matthew were meant to be together, destined for each other, for reasons unknown. When Matthew left the country, Freya ended up dating me, the clueless fool. We've been together for years now, but since Matthew came back, the whole group has been hanging out like they did when they were kids. Lucas has told me countless times about how great their relationship was, how their family supported it, how they were a perfect match. Whenever I heard that, I would go crazy, running to question Freya, only to get the same response, if we could be together, we would have already. What's it got to do with you? It was a vicious cycle, reopening my healing wounds, watching them slowly fester. But luckily, I'm like a cockroach, hard to kill. I cut out the rotten scars, and for the wounds that wouldn't heal, I stitched them up myself, I'm moving on. I accepted Freya's invitation. After all, I was curious to see what kind of drama this banquet would bring. We stood at Lucas's door. Before I could even ring the doorbell, the door opened. Streams of confetti rained down, and Matthew stepped forward, holding a bouquet of roses, handing them to Freya. Freya, today marks the 15th anniversary of us knowing each other. When you confessed to me back then, I didn't respond because I wanted to give you a better life, so you'd never have to worry, so you wouldn't have to work so hard. Now I have the means to make you happy. I think it's time to give you my answer. I want to be with you. Their mutual friends cheered and egged them on without restraint. Lucas chimed in. Matthew gave up a high-paying job overseas and rushed back for Freya. Freya, it's time to get things back on track. We're all waiting for the wedding. The atmosphere was so harmonious that even I, the so-called official boyfriend, couldn't help but applaud. Clap clap clap. It was only then that people seemed to realize I was there. And the crowd fell silent. Except for Lucas, who was clearly drunk. Kevin. You've got the nerve to show up, if you're a real man, you'll be smart enough to give Freya back to Matthew. Haven't you figured it out yet after all these years? Sure. My tone was light and playful. Matthew. Congratulations on getting what you've always wanted. The third wheel is finally getting promoted to the main act. Chapter 7. Freya turned to me in disbelief, as if she didn't recognize me. I shrugged. Did I say something wrong? Kevin. You can't talk about Freya like that. Matthew snapped. Seeing that Freya hadn't responded. A flash of dissatisfaction crossed his face before he redirected his anger toward me. I'm just trying to give us closure for the past. You don't have to be so harsh. Closure. I wasn't sure what kind of closure involves forcing a confession in front of someone's boyfriend. Maybe this is just how rich people entertain themselves. The people around us started taking sides, criticizing me, as if I shouldn't have been there in the first place. Enough. Freya tossed the flowers to Lucas and, with a blank expression, walked over to my side. Kevin is my boyfriend and I'm the one who asked him to come. If you have any complaints, direct them at me. Wow. She suddenly remembered to stand up for me. Freya must be going through something because in the past, whenever her friends made fun of me, she'd stand there like a victorious statue, watching me take the hits. If you asked her about it, she'd say, they're just friends. You're a man. What's a few words? 
Why take it so seriously? Now that I've lost all hope, she's decided to defend me, but it's too late. People often try to prove their place in someone's heart by testing their emotions again and again. The more emotional the reaction, the more important they feel their place is. Eventually, I realized Freya wasn't emotionally numb. She had simply channeled all her attention toward Matthew. Freya, don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to make up for what I couldn't do before. If you're upset, I'll apologize to Kevin on behalf of everyone. I'm sure Kevin won't hold a grudge. Right. Matthew was smart. Defusing the situation by taking all the blame himself. A clever diversion. Freya's face showed hesitation as she glanced between me and the crowd around us. I won't hold a grudge. After all, I didn't say anything when your kissing video went viral. It's just a confession. I'm not that petty. Don't worry. I said casually. A video. What video? Freya was still confused. But the mention of the kiss seemed to jog her memory. I pulled up the video on my phone. To be honest. It was Lucas who sent it to me. Otherwise. I wouldn't have known. As I showed the trending video of them kissing. Freya's face flushed. Alternating between pale and red. Love doesn't disappear in an instant. Humiliating Freya in front of a crowd wasn't my intention. So I chose to walk away. Sitting in my car. Memories of me and Freya flooded my mind. It felt like everything evaporated with today's confrontation. My phone kept ringing. But I silenced it and drove home. To my home. My dad has been out of the hospital for a while now. And I still haven't visited him. As for Freya and me. We'll talk once she's calmed down. By the next time I see her. She might already be Matthew's girlfriend. Chapter 8. As soon as I stepped out of the house in the morning. I saw Freya waiting downstairs. The rising sun cast a soft glow on her delicate face, even making her weariness seem perfectly aligned with the scene. Kevin, you're finally out. Seeing me, she hurried to match my steps. You weren't answering my calls, and you haven't been home. I didn't know how else to reach you. I don't even have your parents' phone numbers. I've been waiting for you. That's right. Five years together with Freya, and she still didn't have my parents' contact info. She hesitated to even visit my dad in the hospital. Yet she never forgot to send gifts to Matthew's parents for every holiday. I had originally planned to use this chance to introduce her to my parents, but now it seemed unnecessary. Seeing my silence, she anxiously continued, I really don't know how that video got out. I've already contacted the uploader to get it taken down. We were just playing a game back then, and I didn't want to embarrass Matthew in front of everyone. This was my fault. I swear it won't happen again. Kevin, it won't happen again. Freya had said that many times, after getting drunk with Matthew, after spending a night together because I couldn't reach her. After staying over at Matthew's place to take care of him, she would always snap. I told you it won't happen again. What more do you want? She was the one who kept making promises. Only to break them. I'll stay at my place for now. Let's both take some time to think things over. Ignoring her hollow promises. I got in the car and drove to work. During lunch, Freya sent me a message, but quickly retracted it. For some reason. This time she sent a picture right after. It was a travel plan she had made. I replied with a question mark. Not understanding her intent. Was she really showing me her travel plans with Matthew? You said you've always wanted to visit the capital. Right. I've made all the arrangements. Let's go together. We had talked about going on a trip so many times. I had worried she was too busy. So I made all the plans. All she had to do was follow me. Every time. She'd say she was too busy. Busy having dinners with Matthew. Busy stargazing with Matthew. Busy attending events with Matthew. There was never time to travel with me. Too bad I deleted our previous chats. Otherwise, I could have revisited the countless times I played the fool. Usually, my long messages would only get brief replies. Sometimes, it was just me talking to myself. At first, I'd tell myself she was just busy with work and didn't have time for me. Eventually, I got used to it. Even treating our chat as her daily reminder to not forget to eat. In love, the one who loves more is the one who loses. But I liked her. So what could I do? Now. I realize that sometimes the best outcome between people is to not disturb each other. I casually skimmed through her travel itinerary and set it aside. She hadn't even remembered that I'm allergic to chicken. And yet she had enthusiastically highlighted the first stop, roasted chicken in the capital. Chapter 9. The weekend finally arrived. My colleagues had been pestering me to treat them, celebrating my promotion to team leader. I grinned and, with a wave of my hand, declared that today's bill was on me. I must admit, not planning for a wedding has really loosened up my spending. I used to live so frugally, saving every penny to marry Freya. Even when co-workers wanted to split a coffee, they'd automatically skip asking me. They knew I'd refuse. After a while, they stopped inviting me to group activities altogether. Meanwhile, Freya spent money like water. All for Matthew's happiness. Luxury watches. High-end goods. She'd buy them without blinking. She even dipped into our house savings without hesitation. I tried to advise her to be more mindful of her spending. But she'd snap back. 
Most of that money was earned by me anyway. I can always earn it back later. Eventually, I stopped bringing it up. Now, I'm genuinely grateful that I have time for myself again. With arms around each other's shoulders, we headed to a barbecue joint, which was apparently our company's hidden gem. Big portions, great flavor, and affordable. Just as I was raising my glass to celebrate, Freya called. Kevin, are you coming home tonight? I bought a bunch of your favorite dishes. It's been so long since we've had dinner together. I thought about Freya's disastrous cooking skills. If we ate, I'd probably have to do the cooking myself. No need. You eat by yourself. I'm eating out. I replied. Just then, one of my female colleagues shouted for everyone to raise a toast to me. Freya's voice suddenly grew sharp. Who's that? Why are there women's voices? I sighed and explained. I'm at a dinner. Isn't it normal to have female co-workers? Don't be so paranoid. Every time I found out Freya was with Matthew. She would say the same thing, we're just hanging out with a group, it's perfectly normal for there to be guys, don't be so paranoid. Now, I finally had the chance to throw that line back at her. After hanging up, I went back to enjoying the food. I have to admit, the grilled skewers at this place were delicious. Throughout the evening, Freya sent me a few messages, saying she was worried about me driving home after drinking and offering to come pick me up. I ignored her and made plans with my colleagues for another round. When I didn't reply, she called again determined not to give up until I answered. What's your deal, princess? I'm worried about you. Just give me a chance to apologize. Okay. She paused before finally getting the words out. Hearing an apology from Freya was like seeing a different person entirely. She always prided herself on being a strong, independent woman. Someone who bled, sweat, but never cried. She never admitted her mistakes or apologized. When I loved her, that was her filter of strength. When I no longer loved her, it just seemed crazy. I sent her my location but purposely didn't mention when we'd be done. By the time we stumbled out, drunk and unsteady, Freya was already waiting at the door. How did you drink this much? She tried to help me into her car, but I waved her off, staggering toward my own. Even drunk, I didn't forget how expensive the parking fees here were. Freya bit her lip but eventually followed me. I want to go home. I mumbled from the passenger seat, watching as Freya drove us back. This isn't my home. I want to go to my own house. When we got to her place, I refused to go upstairs, insisting on going back to my parents' house, that sneaky woman. She tricked me, she had ulterior motives. Freya, now unusually gentle, helped me upstairs and put me to bed. Before leaving, she pressed a soft kiss to my forehead. I opened my eyes, fully alert, touching the spot where her kiss had landed. I felt an eerie sense of calm wash over me. Chapter 10 To avoid running into Freya, I got up before dawn. I didn't expect to find her sleeping on the couch. I tiptoed over and gently covered her with a blanket, but it woke her up. Kevin, you're awake, I'll make you some hangover soup. She mumbled sleepily, her voice soft, lacking the authority she always carried at work. No need, just go back to bed and rest, I said, then hurried out the door. Surprisingly, Freya didn't go to the art exhibition with Matthew. Instead, she brought me a lunchbox and left it at the office front desk, afraid I'd refuse to see her. From that point on, Freya seemed like a completely different person. She stopped hanging out with Lucas and their group, and even turned down invitations from Matthew. Every day, she delivered lunch to me, reminding me to eat well. Even when I went out with colleagues, she would show up at the restaurant to pick me up afterward. I had no idea what her game was, but with a new project keeping me busy, I let her be. So, Freya started hurrying home every day to cook for me. Some of her friends messaged her, teasing that she must be preparing to settle down with Matthew and become a housewife. I happened to be sitting next to her when she received one of those messages. The voice note played loud and clear. Freya fumbled to close the message, but accidentally turned up the volume instead. Expressionless, I sat next to her, reviewing a work proposal, feeling utterly calm inside. I wasn't going to foolishly open my heart again just because of Freya's sudden change, and I was right not to. I overheard her messaging back, and she even posted a picture of us together in her moments. Noticing my frown, she hurried to show me her post, thinking that I was upset about it. Truth was, I was only frowning because of a minor mistake in the proposal. She showed me the picture she had posted in her moments. It was from our five-year anniversary, taken at a studio where I dragged her to get some photos. That day, she had been unusually cheerful, constantly smiling. I had thought it was because she was excited about my proposal plan. It wasn't until later that I realized it was because she'd received a message from Matthew, telling her that her first love was about to return to the country. Thinking back now, that happiness was real. But beautiful moments are fleeting, and five years passed in the blink of an eye. The company just called me in for overtime. You'll have to eat alone, I said. I needed to head back and fix this proposal, which could be my stepping stone to a promotion. Ignoring Freya's hesitant look and the soup she had painstakingly made, I left the house, 
She didn't need me as a dinner guest anyway. Who would have thought that after finishing my overtime, I'd find Freya waiting for me outside my office again. I rubbed my eyes, thinking I was seeing things. I had expected her to throw a fit after how I had brushed her off, and a cold war to inevitably follow. But there she was, waiting to pick me up from work, her face flushed from the cold wind. At that moment, I finally made a decision. Even though I didn't love her anymore, the Freya I remembered had been a bright, confident girl full of sunshine. For my own sake, I didn't want to see her reduced to this pitiful state. Besides, I knew there was no going back for us. Let's talk, I said, walking toward her and watching as her expression shifted from surprise to fear. Without a word, she got in her car and drove away. I scratched my head and decided to head to my parents' house instead. We both knew there was an insurmountable gap between us. Dragging things out wouldn't fix anything. Chapter 11 I didn't expect Freya to be this patient. To avoid me bringing up a breakup, she initiated another cold war. This time, neither of us was willing to back down. Just when I was stewing in my own thoughts, my dad called me into his room to talk. Life isn't all about love, sometimes. Letting go now might be the best way to meet again under better circumstances. Right now, you're both too stubborn, and it's only hurting you. When my parents first learned I was with Freya, they were happy for me. They had heard me mention her name many times, and they were delighted at the prospect of us getting married. They'd even urged us to tie the knot, but I kept brushing them off. I took on all the pressure myself, just to spare Freya from worrying about such things. I didn't want her to be burdened by these trivial matters. Who would have thought I'd never get the chance to say these things? Just as I stepped out of the room, I heard a knock at the door. Kevin. Freya walked in, full of energy, carrying health supplements, and greeted my parents with a bright smile. Uncle. Auntie. It's been so long. I've been busy lately, so I haven't had time to visit. I heard uncle's recovery has been going well, so I came by to check on him. My parents looked at her in surprise, then glanced at me. They soon excused themselves, leaving us alone in the room. With just the two of us, I dropped my polite demeanor. Freya. Don't you think it's a bit inappropriate to show up unannounced? Uncle's been sick. I came to check on him. Is that so wrong? My dad's already recovered. Now you remember to come see him. Where were you when I asked you to visit earlier? I was busy then. But as soon as I had time. Good. Since you're here. Let's have a proper talk. We went to a cafe near the house. And I stopped her from ordering anything. Let's get this over with quickly. I need to head back to work. Don't you think the way we've been interacting is a bit off? No man can stand his girlfriend being so close with another guy. Not to mention even more inappropriate behavior. Ignoring Freya's attempts to explain, I continued, I really did love you back then, but you shouldn't have taken my love for granted. I'm only human, I get tired too, I sighed, debating whether to keep talking. Freya just sat there, quietly crying. I know I've been selfish, Kevin. I admit that when Matthew first came back, I was confused. But over time, I've realized that you're the one I truly love. I've told them all that I'm your girlfriend now. And I told Matthew we won't be hanging out anymore. Can you please give me another chance? I'll change until you love me again. Okay. Freya. You still don't get it. Do you? The problem between us isn't just Matthew. It's that you crossed a line. Without even realizing it. You gave him your heart. I never saw any of the special affection that a girlfriend should have for her boyfriend. If I had a childhood friend and constantly catered to her. Would you be happy? And the most painful thing for me was when my dad got sick and wanted to see you. But you ran off to take care of Matthew. Did he really need your care? Or were you just avoiding meeting my parents? We should have ended this a long time ago. With that, I left the cafe. As I looked through the car window, I saw Freya sitting there quietly, the sunlight highlighting the tear stains on her face. Maybe this was the first time she had ever cried for me. Chapter 12 I have many memories of Freya crying, like a little hamster. She would bury her head in the blankets and silently shed tears. If she stayed that way for more than five minutes, there was no doubt, she was crying. There were many reasons for her tears, failing an exam, frustrations at work, feeling homesick, or perhaps it was thoughts of her unrequited love that never came to fruition. She cried after meeting Matthew, too, but those were tears of joy, the kind of happiness where it felt like everything was solved just by having her first love by her side. When I stood next to Freya, I used to think to myself, as long as I'm here, I'll never let her shed a single tear for me in this lifetime. In the end, I broke that promise. After talking things through with Freya, I deleted all my connections with Lucas and the others. They were friends I had only gotten to know for Freya's sake, and they never acknowledged me anyway. Finally, I got back on track. My busy schedule kept my mind from wandering to all those messy thoughts. Each day, I worked, studied, and spent time talking to my parents when I got home. There was a strange sense of peace in my life. Freya never reached out to me again, nor did she update her social media. That was for the best. If I saw her again, I might be reminded of my pitiful past as her simp. 
which I'd rather not relive. Just as I thought my days would continue passing quietly, I ran into her at the hospital. I was there with my dad for a follow-up when I spotted her. Looking around at the entrance, I wanted to pretend I hadn't seen her, but her eyes lit up when she saw me, and she jogged over. Kevin. Uncle. What a coincidence. She greeted us and naturally took the medical file from my hands. Was the checkup smooth? Uncle. You're recovering well. Right. She affectionately linked her arm through my dad's and kept glancing back at me. Kevin. Why are you just standing there? Come on. Catch up. I was at a loss. Watching as she led my dad to the car and headed home. The whole way. She had my dad laughing non-stop. I couldn't even figure out how to cut into their conversation. When we got home. My dad asked me to see Freya off properly. Seeing her proud. Triumphant smile. I fell silent once again. Freya. You don't have to do this. Really. You don't need to waste your time taking care of my parents. Besides. There's no future for us. Why are you putting yourself through this? The Freya I remembered always held her head high. Never bowing to the world. Even when life was full of ups and downs. She was always full of hope. Even though we've broken up. I don't want her to change who she is. It's not worth it. People should live for their own brilliance. Not give up their identity. That's the lesson I've learned. I just feel a bit guilty about uncle and auntie. I never properly visited them while we were together. Can't you give me this chance? I just want to make up for lost time. Is that so wrong? You know my answer. I don't want to be harsh. Hearing my mom call out for Freya to stay for dinner. I steeled myself. Ignoring Freya's hopeful gaze as I closed the door behind her. It was better for both of us to end this sooner. Besides, I really didn't want to drag this out any longer. Chapter 13. Recently, the company offered me an assignment abroad. If I do well, I could potentially get promoted by three levels. I had been hesitating. My parents are here, and I didn't want to leave them. Especially with my dad getting older. But today, I realized I have no choice but to go. Part of it is to avoid Freya. But I also want to challenge myself. After all. I've been in a slump for too long. It's time to get my life back on track. As always, my family supported my decision to explore new opportunities. So, on a quiet afternoon, I packed my bags and left home. Aside from my parents, I didn't tell anyone. Freya, too, stopped contacting me, but somehow, she kept popping up in conversations with my parents. Freya came by to clean the house today. Freya took your dad to his hospital checkup yesterday. Or... Freya's learned how to cook now. She made a whole table of your favorite dishes for us. I was grateful for everything she did for my parents, but I never reached out to her. There was no trace of Matthew or Lucas in her WeChat moments anymore. Just pictures of her flower arranging and cooking. But it didn't matter. I would never fall for her again. I used to learn how to cook dishes she liked. Pestering my mom for tips. I would get up early to go to the flower market. Just to buy her the best bouquet. But once we broke up, it meant the end. A year passed in the blink of an eye. I video called my parents and told them I'd met someone here, and I'd bring her home for New Year's. My parents stiffened for a moment, then smiled and agreed. From the corner of the screen, I spotted the edge of Freya's dress. She was wearing the long dress I loved when we first met. I smiled and ended the call. Looks like my parents will soon return to enjoying their time together. As for a girlfriend, maybe I'll just rent one online when the time comes.